Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am Geekman, your host, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a desktop wallpaper that looks like real wood. Now, a couple of assumptions before we begin, the first being that you're using Photoshop CC 2015 or later. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. The second assumption that I'm making is that you are using Windows. If you're using a Mac, then when I say hit the control key on your keyboard, that means the command key. And when I, hit, and when I say hit the alt key on your keyboard, that means the option key. Now, with that out of the way, let's get started. The first thing that we're going to need to do is create a new document. So let's get to Control N on your keyboard to bring up the new image uh, dialog box. And let's name this Wooden Desktop Wallpaper. All right, and we're going to be working at a width of 3840, height of 2160, resolution of 150 pixels per inch, RGB color 8-bit. The background color doesn't matter. It's white right now, but we'll be changing that. And uh, I like to work in Adobe RGB 1998 square pixels. So let's hit OK. And there is our new image document. Now, the first thing that we're going to need to do is change our foreground and background colors. So let's go over here and choose our foreground color and we're going to want a nice brownish color so we're going to go with the color I've already chosen which is 9A7636 then we're going to hit OK and we're going to go to our background color and we're going to put in a darker brownish color and that color is 795309 hit OK now the way that we're going to get our wood grain is we're going to use a filter called fibers so we're going to go up to filter render fibers and it's going to come up with this teeny tiny window that's a preview of the effect now uh, it, it's hard to see but you can't make the uh, window any larger so we're going to have to deal with that now the variance that we're going to want here is going to be 14 the strength is going to be 27 and you got this randomize button down here that helps it look different every time you use it so you can hit randomize a few times until you see something that you think looks a lot like wood I'll go with this sure why not hit OK and there is the beginnings of our wood grain now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make it look a little bit less synthetic and a little bit more natural by using the liquify filter now you can get to the liquify filter by going up to filter liquify or as you can see right here it says shift control X will also bring up the liquify filter so let's click on that and bring up liquify now the first thing that we're going to want to do is zoom out a little bit so that we can see everything so you're going to click on the magnifying glass then hold down the alt key to make it uh, zoom out and then we're going to zoom out until we can see all four corners and the tool that we're going to be using after we've zoomed out is called the Forward Warp Tool. You can get to it by hitting W on your keyboard or by clicking on the topmost icon in the Liquify menu. Uh, and then we're going to change our brush options over here on the right hand side. Okay, we're going to change the size to 400 and we're going to change the pressure to only 50. And that's going to allow us to, uh, to, to change the look of this and make it feel a little bit more natural by uh, dragging our brush over it. Now what we want to do is we want to try and keep with an up and down motion to keep with the grain. But you can wiggle a little bit left and right as you do that to give uh, a few more striations and make it look a little bit more natural. Now it's hard to explain it without actually doing it yourself so if you're following along just try it with me. Start towards the middle and just drag up a little bit and you'll see that you get a little bit of a wave there then go back to the middle and come down a little bit and then just keep doing this being careful of the edges uh, and make it look you know like wood see I did that to show you that if you drag up or down or in or in from the left and the right uh, you'll see the transparent underneath your layer so you don't want that so all you have to do is just drag it back down and you're fine so you know if you do that over here you just drag it back it's you know it's just kind of warping it as we go it's 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 called liquify but really what you're doing is just grabbing a piece 
like this and pulling it in a direction. So here we go. We're just going to do this quick so that we get an idea as to what we're doing. Now normally I would take a little bit more time, give it a little bit more of a difference, but uh, no matter what you do, it's going to start to look like real wood, like, like the, the tree that it was cut from actually grew. It no longer looks synthetic. It no longer looks like uh, it was done by a computer. It kind of looks like it's a real tree. All right, so this looks pretty good, I think doing it very quickly just to give you an idea. You can take more time with what you're doing. Uh, but remember, this doesn't have to be the final product here because we're going to be adding in a few more different pieces like knots and imperfections. This is just to give the grain a little bit of movement so that it looks less synthetic and more real. Once we have something that we think looks good, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to hit OK and that's going to apply the filter to our layer and we now have a wood grain that looks a little bit more realistic. Now what we're going to do as promised is add some imperfections and knots to this to make it look very real. So the first thing that we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to select the elliptical marquee tool. Now you can do that by hitting M on your keyboard or by going up here to the uh, marquee uh, tool and then just clicking on elliptical marquee and we're going to set a feather up here of 30. So we're going to make that 30. Anti-alias is fine, style is normal. And what we're going to do, where we want our imperfection or not, we're going to draw an ellipse. So let's say I wanted one right here. Okay, about that big. Why not? It can be as big or as small as you'd like. So then we're going to go to filter distort and zigzag. Okay, and you can see up here it's causing this little zigzaggy striations up here. Now the ridges that you want probably only want to be about two or one. Okay, anything more than that and it begins to get really weird looking as you can see. It looks far more synthetic. What we want it is to look normal uh, and natural. So the amount is going to give you your knots. As you can see, the knots are beginning to show up. So we're going to figure out one that looks nice. This looks pretty good. You got a knot here. You got a little bowing out here. We're going to hit OK. And now we've got a knot here. And we're going to do that all throughout the entire document. Wherever you want a knot or an imperfection in your image, that's where you're going to do this. Now, it doesn't work very well if you use a large piece like this. What you want to do is you want to keep it this big or smaller. So let's show you uh, how you can make a really nice, neat little knot. You're going to go down here just like that. See, it's so small. And we're going to do our filter. We're going to go to uh, distort and then zigzag. And you see you got a little knot there. But we want to do it different each time. So we're going to go this way and we'll make the ridges only one ridge and we'll go a little bit more and there that looks good and boom you've got yourself another little imperfection and knot and let's do that throughout the entire document now I'm not going to show you how I do each and every one but I'll show you the finished product so hold on I'll be right back and here we have what I think is is a finished product of lots of little knots in here like this uh, and it looks more like real wood panels. So what we're going to do next is we're going to give it a little bit more of a, of a wood look by making the grain stand out more and by adding more grain to the image. So what we're going to do first is we're going to uh, go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask, Okay, and you can see already it's brought out all of the grain in the wood. So the amount that we're going to use here is 100, the radius is going to be 100, and the threshold will be 0. And we're going to hit OK. And now we've got really wood looking uh, effect. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new layer. So we're going to go Control, Alt, Shift, and the letter N on our keyboard that will bring up a brand new layer. 
We're going to name this layer Grain. And we're going to go to Edit, Fill. And we're going to fill with 50% gray. We're going to change the mode to normal mode. Opacity is going to be 100%. Uh, preserve transparency is unchecked. Okay. Then we're going to go to Filter, Noise, Add Noise. And we're going to make this Amount 100, Gaussian, and Monochromatic. And we're going to hit OK. Next, we're going to add some blur to this. Now, the reason that we're doing all of this is the wood itself, if I turn off the grain, the wood itself looks pretty good now, but wood has even smaller imperfections in it that are the grain of the wood as it grows. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to add that in by changing, by adding in uh, a new layer that we're going to use on this. Now, what we want to do is we want to change the uh, layer mode to soft light. Okay, and you can see that it's got all this, well, it's, it's got all the, the uh, monochromatic noise on it right now, but we don't want just noise because that makes it look fake. It doesn't look real here. So what we're going to do with the grain is we're going to go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. Okay, and we're going to give it a motion blur angle of 90 degrees, and we're going to make the distance 50 pixels. Okay, and we're going to hit OK, and that now looks more like wood. If I turn this off, you can see that this is very clean. But this gives it just that little much, uh, that little effect of, of having a little bit of discolorization, a little bit of graininess within the grain itself, that makes it look a little bit more real to the eye. This is it without the grain. This is with the grain. And that's what we're looking for, a more realistic wood. So then next what we're going to do is we're going to merge these two layers. So we're going to hit uh, Control E, and now we've got our layer, and we're going to change the name of this layer to wood, uh, base wood texture. Let's call it that. All right. So now we have our base wood texture, and what we're going to do now is we're going to slice this up into individual boards so that we can then use those individual boards to create our background. Because as it is, this doesn't look real. It looks like one piece of artwork that was made, but it doesn't look like individual boards, which is what we're going for, because uh, usually wooden walls are made up of boards of wood. So we're going to use a tool called the Slice Tool. If you've never used it before, it can be found under the, um, under the uh, uh, Crop Tool. So if you hit, if you go to C on your keyboard, or if you just go to this crop tool, you will see that you get your crop tool, and down here is the slice tool, and that's what we're looking for right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to <coughs> select the entire image from one end to the other, and that will give us one giant slice of the entire image. And what the slice tool does is it's great for working on the web, but it's also very good for taking an image like this and cutting it up into smaller pieces and then exporting those pieces into a folder on your hard drive and then you can use those pieces in something else. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to right click on that slice. We're going to go to divide slice and then we're going to check divide vertically into 24 slices evenly spaced. And you can see it's made 24 slices here. So hit OK. And you'll see that we have these 24 slices. That is now our pieces of wood. And then what we're going to do is we're going to save this. We're going to File, Export, Save for Web Legacy. And we're going to do the following as soon as it's ready. It's taking a moment because it's got to do each individual slice. 
So what we're going to do is zoom out a little bit. So let's go to our zoom tool and zoom out until we can see the entire image. There we go. Then we're going to use our slice selection tool and we're going to select all the slices by holding down the shift key and clicking on each slice. I believe you can also just click and drag the entire thing so that works a lot faster. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make this into a JPEG. So we're going to go here to JPEG. We can go high, it doesn't matter which one because we, we're not going to use high. We're going to click down here and we're going to make this maximum instead of high. The quality, we want it to be 100. Blur is going to be zero. Matte doesn't matter because we're not showing any background. We don't want it to be progressive, so that's unchecked. We want it to be optimized, so that is checked. Matte is going to be white, doesn't matter. Embed color profile, we want checked because we want the color profile we're working in to stay with these images so that we can rework with them when we build our wooden wall desktop paper. So we don't want to convert to sRGB, so keep that unchecked. The image should be our standard regular size, which is 3840 by 2160 at 100%. So everything else seems fine. We don't want to change anything else. So we're going to hit Save. Now another Save Document dialog box is going to come up. Now we're going to want to put it in here. Uh, file name, wooden desktop wallpaper. Okay, that's fine. And then at the end of it, it's going to put .jpg. Uh, we only want the images, so images only. We don't want any HTML. Settings, we're going to want the settings to be custom. And slices, we want selected slices. Okay, that just makes sure that we're going to hit all of these slices. Then we want to hit, we want to find where we want to put these. So we're going to go to, uh, I'm keeping them in my PSD folder and I'm going to do save and it's going to save all of these as individual images. Once that's done then we're going to save and close this file. Now that we've saved all of those individual boards what we need to do is put it together in a brand new file. So we're going to hit Control N on our keyboard again. We're going to use the same information that we just used so it should all still be there and we're going to name this our wood wallpaper. Hit enter and we've got our wood wallpaper. So let's go to the actual file in Explorer, meaning not in Photoshop. We need to go to our file explorer. I'm going to drag it in from my other window here. Here we go. So these are the images that we just created. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag all of these, select them all, and drag them into our document. And they should all come in right in the middle one at a time. Move it where we want it to be by using our Move tool. Well, actually, that's all you can do. And we're going to just put like the first one here. Hit Enter. The second one we'll put below it. Here. Hit Enter. Number three, we'll put next to it. We'll just put it down here like this. And you can see we're building a wall. Now I'm not going to show you exactly how I do this. Well, actually, you know, we will. You'll watch me do the whole thing. It's only 24. I know it's a little slow and boring, but this is what we're going to do. All right, we'll leave that one like that. We'll put this guy way up here. And as you can see, because we've cut it up into smaller pieces, and we're putting those pieces together in this way so that nothing really matches what it's next to or on top of or around. It's beginning to look more like a real wall. Okay, we're getting there. We're almost there. And let's do this guy down like that. Put this guy up here. There. No, it's fun. It's good. It's interesting because you're building a nice wall of wood that you just made. And by doing it uh, in this manner, now there are other ways that you can do this. You could have, for example, uh, kept the wall as it was and just drawn small lines uh, in between the areas that you wanted the wood 
to look like wood boards, but I prefer to do it this way because it gives you a little bit more creative freedom, and I think the final product looks a little bit more like real wood walls. So we're almost done, and there we go. So that's all of our wooden walls. So here we are all done with the wood. It looks good. We just need to finish the other half. So here's what I like to do. Before I do that, I want to see these spaces between the wood look a little bit better. Uh, select one of our layers, doesn't matter which one. We're going to add a layer style to it. We're going to add a stroke. And that stroke is going to be a uh, size of 7, position centered, blend mode luminosity, opacity will be 20%, overprint is checked, fill type of color, and the color is going to be pure black, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Hit OK. Then what we're going to do is we're going to copy that effect. So you're going to right click on the effect, and we're going to hit copy layer style, then we're going to select all the other layers. And we're going to right click, and then we're going to hit paste layer style. And that will give everybody the same layer style. So everybody has the same layer style and as you can see now you can see individual boards of our wooden wall. But it only lasts halfway through the image. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all of these layers and we're going to drag them down to the group icon and we now have group one. Then we're going to duplicate group one by bringing the entire group down to the duplicate, uh, add new layer, and then we're going to change this to group 2, and we're going to turn off group 1. So now we only have group 2, and we're going to then build the other side of our wooden wall. Now something to keep in mind is you don't want everything to look the same. So in order for things not to look the same, by keeping group 2 highlighted and not one of the individual layers, you can then hit control T for transform and it will transform everything in the group at the same time. Then right click on it and choose flip vertical and now it looks slightly different. Okay, hit enter. Now you could just drag this over to the left hand side and be done with it. But I like to mix things up so that the eye is fooled into thinking that these boards are not the same boards as were used on the right hand side. So the way that you do that is you grab the boards that are mostly hidden and you use those and move it over. So this one was using up the almost the entire thing. So we'll just put him all the way down here like this. And that's what we're going to do with everything. Ooh, computer's slowing down. So this guy's using the bottom. So we'll shove this one up here like this. And as you can see, things are already different. So we'll use this guy from the middle. We'll put him down here like this. And this one here, I'm going to use you way up here. Uh, this guy, we're going to use you like this. And this guy, we'll use you down here. Like this. And you just keep filling in everything like this. That's really all that there is to it. So you're going to build the other half of your wall this way. Now I'll show you how I'm doing it and I'll try to go as quickly as I can to make this uh, as simple as possible for everybody. Uh, let's use this guy way up here. And let's use this guy down here. And let's use this guy over here. This guy over here. See, by using the pieces that were hidden before and by using the opposite of what you already had, the boards will not look the same. 
So this side of the wall and the other side of the wall will look different. It makes for a much more interesting and pleasing to the eye look. I'm going to uh, be quiet now so that you can just watch what I'm doing and follow along doing your own. But it's pretty easy to get this done. It's just a lot of dragging and dropping. We all do it all day. And we're down to our last board right here, which we'll just stick right up over here, like this. And then we can open up group number one, and as soon as my computer catches up, I don't know why it's so slow today, but there you go. You've got a full wooden wall. Now the last thing that I'm going to show you how to do is to make this a little bit more dramatic and to be able to change the color. Now the color that I'm using here is the, actually the color of the floor in my house. But you can use this with any color, and the way to change the color is to create a hue saturation adjustment layer above both groups. So let's go over here and I'll show you how to do that. You can go down here to your uh, layer adjustment panel and you can go to hue saturation. Now the way you can do it is you can change the hue uh, by doing this. I don't know why it's not. Oh, you want colorize to be checked and you can change the hue this way uh, and the saturation like this. As soon as the computer catches up, the color will change. There you go. Now I've got green wood, but I don't really want that. So we're going to go back to here. It doesn't make a difference because I'm going to take the saturation way, way, way down, like so. Uh, and I'm going to leave it like that. I like that. So then what I'm going to show you how to do is create a little vignette so that it's a little bit more dramatic than just being a plain wooden wall. So we're going to do another adjustment layer on top, and it's going to be a curves adjustment layer. Now in the curves adjustment layer, you can see that there's a line going diagonally across this grid, which shows you the color space. Uh, and what you want to do is you want to grab the upper right-hand corner and drag it down to about the first line here of the grid. And that will darken the entire image once my computer catches up. Uh, then we're going to go up here on the upper left of the Properties dialog box, and you'll see that it says Masks if you click on the rightmost button. Leftmost button is where you've got your grid, uh, and the rightmost button is your masks. And we're going to change the feather of the mask to 175, which is good. Then we're going to make sure that we're clicked on the mask itself on the layer, curves layer, we can close the properties panel and we're going to make sure that we're on the curves layer. And then we're going to select our uh, elliptical marquee tool again and we're going to change the feather to zero and we're going to make a very large oval selection of the entire image. Now inside of the uh, elliptical marquee that we just did, you can click and drag to get it centered on your image like so. And then you need to fill it with white by hitting Alt and Backspace. And now you have a nice dramatic wooden wall desktop paper. Now you can set uh, the layer opacity to 90% if you'd like, if you don't want the corners to be as dark as they are. So you can go up here to Opacity, and you can change that to 90. And the upper corners and lower corners won't be as dark. And now you can save this out, and you've got yourself wooden wallpaper that should fit just about any desktop that you've got on your computer. Well, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial on how to make a desktop wallpaper made of wood. And if you did, please like and subscribe. Leave me a comment because there'll be new tutorials every Tuesday. Thank you once again, and this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.